Thank you and be seated. If there was a way to rewrite the title of that song, it could be so easily written that our failures in life, our, our failures in our Christian walk, the opportunities that I have to do the right thing and I don't, or I have a, the opportunity to not do something and I do, those failures are not final. If, if there would be one thing that I would hope you'd hear today, it, it would be that because of God's grace and His mercies, our failures are not final. Winston Churchill is quoted to have said that success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is our courage to keep showing up that matters. And I would say to you that, that that applies to everything in our life, especially in our spiritual walk. You know as well as I do, if, if, you, if, if God allows something to happen in your life and you, and you end up on a mountaintop, sooner or later you, you come down off of that mountaintop. Success in our Christian walk is not final. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, if I go through a, a low time in my life, whether it is by my choosing or because of the circumstances that I'm in, I, I don't stay down there. It's not final. It's not fatal. It's, it's the, the courage every day to get back up and to focus my attention on who God is, what he's told me, what his word tells me, and for me to go through that day trusting him. I visited this past Tuesday night with one of the men at Highway 80 Rescue Mission. And his question to me was so pertinent for us today. He would say, how can God love me after? And I said, because he's God. And I, I would say to you and to me today that, that we can't get locked in on the idea that by what I do or something I don't do, that it makes God not love me. No, the, the mindset is how can it be? I don't know how it can be. I just know that's what God's grace and mercy is. Would you find in your copy of God's Word, the Gospel according to Matthew, first book in the New Testament, and in particular, would you find chapter 26? Matthew chapter 26. We all succeed from time to time, and we all fail from time to time. But it's the day-to-day -day life that God wants us to Focus our attention every day on him and move. A little bit of context before we read Matthew 26. It's the last few hours of Jesus' earthly ministry. We're celebrating it chronologically right now in our, uh, on our calendar. We know that next Sunday is what we call Palm Sunday, followed by Resurrection Sunday. Easter Sunday is on the 21st. So, so chronologically for us, we're studying what Jesus is doing and what's happening in the life of Jesus. And it's just a few hours before Jesus dies. He's had his experience in the Garden of Gethsemane where he took his disciples and he grabbed three of them, Peter, James, and John, and he, and he brought them in a little bit further and he said, stay here and pray. Pray with me. Peter was one of those. Just a few minutes earlier, before that prayer, Jesus had celebrated with his disciples what we know of as the Last Supper. And, and in it, he told his disciples, be careful. Watch what you do. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he's telling the, Gethsemane, he's telling the disciples, hey, be careful. Watch what you do. Pray with me here. Jesus, right after the Garden, is arrested. He is falsely accused. He goes through two mock trials. He's found wrongly to have committed blasphemy, uh, treason. He's sentenced to die, and he dies on an old rugged cross. As that is, is happening, as all of that is transpiring, our text comes into play. And it is one of Peter's great failures. I want us to read it. 
And I want us to see that failure is not final. In honor of God and his word, would you stand? Allow for me to read for us Matthew chapter 26. Show your favorite neighbor where verse 69 is in your copy of God's word. And if you don't have a Bible, if you would like one, if you don't own a Bible and you want one, would you come see me after the service? One of our families has given me a Bible, and I'd love to give it to you if you need a Bible. Matthew chapter 26. Let's read verses 69 through 75. It'll be on the screen behind me as well. And now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also, she said, were with Jesus of Galilee. Verse 70, but he denied it before them all. He said, I don't know what you're talking about. Then, verse 71, he went out to the gateway where another girl saw him and said to the people that were there, hey, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He, verse 72, denied it again with an oath this time. He said, I do not know the man, exclamation point. And after a little while, verse 73, those standing there went up to Peter and said, surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. And then Peter began to call down curses on himself and he swore I do not know the man and immediately a rooster crowed and then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken to him Peter before the rooster crows you will disown me three times and notice how much of a failure he thought he was and he went outside and wept bitterly pray with me would you father would you let us three see through Peter's failure and how you restored him, would you let us see how through our failures we can be restored also? I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and be seated. If you don't mind, keep your copy of God's Word open. Because I do want us to, to work through this text and, and to learn that, that our failure, when we fail, when we, when we don't do what we're supposed to do, it's not final. And truth is, we have to kind of get this out in the open. We have to, we have to be transparent. We have to, we have to before, we, before we go any further, we have to at least admit that all of us struggle with something. That all of us sin. That there's not any of us in here. You, you didn't walk in here perfect, and, and you're not going to walk out perfect. I didn't walk in here perfect, and I won't walk out perfect. All of us sin. We, we, we may sin differently, but we all sin. What I struggle with, you may not struggle with. And what you struggle with, the person beside you may not struggle with. But, but as, as you and I both know, sin is common to all of us. It's as old as the Garden of Eden. And it'll be around until the true King of Kings and Lord of Lords reigns supremely forever but we struggle the apostle paul wrote about it it's it really is one of my favorite verses i want to print it on the board for you it's romans 7 and 15 because it describes for each of us who we are paul in writing to the church at rome he said the very thing that i want to do i don't do and the thing that i hate that's what i end up doing that would describe each of us. None of us want to sin. We don't. We don't want to sin. But the very thing that we do is sin. And, and, and there are things in our life that we would say, oh, I, don't, I do not want to do that. I, I want to stay away from that. I don't want that sin. And that sometimes ends up being the very thing that we do. And we all struggle with that. So what do we do? What do we do to keep from sinning? How could, how could Peter, and, and, and I hope you're like me at the, at the onset, I, I was honest enough to, as, as I began to study this passage, I was honest enough to say, Peter, how could you? Man, you've been walking around with Jesus for the last three years. You were just in the Garden of Gethsemane. You heard him say, Stay here and pray. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
You, Peter, he warned you. How could you do that? I hope you're honest enough to be able to, in this text, to say, you know what? I've done the same thing. I may not have done it in the way Peter has. I don't think in my life, honestly, I don't think anybody's ever said to me, you're a Christian, right? And I've said, no. I don't think I've ever done that. But man, I've had opportunities to speak up for him and didn't. I've had opportunities to, to say something and because of something in that circumstance, I didn't. I've had opportunities to do the right thing and not. I've had opportunities to not do the, the wrong thing and do them. I've had opportunities to look like Christ and I look like anything but Christ. I've had opportunities to sound like Christ and I've looked and sounded anything further away from Christ. I've had the opportunity to, to think the right thing and end up thinking the wrong thing. I can't, I can't point any fingers at Peter in this text, but I can learn from him. Because I think if, if you'll allow me to for just a few minutes, I want us to see in this text that, that there's some ways we can avoid sinning. We, we can avoid doing the wrong thing. There's some, there's some things that I can do that might help me ahead of time to do the right thing. And I just want to, for, for just a few minutes, I, I want to point out four truths in this, in this passage that, that I think if Peter had a chance to go back, he, he might have changed some things. And I can look back in my life, and if I would have put these four into certain things in my life, when I had the opportunity to do the right thing and I didn't, or I had the opportunity to not do the wrong thing and I did, if I'd have put these four in my life, I think I would have sinned less, which is what you and I want, isn't it? Can we be, can we be open before a holy God that our desire is what the song said earlier, to, to be holy in His sight? We, we want to sin less. You're not here today because you want to sin more. You're not. You're here today because you want to sin less. We're not in this place today because we want to, we want to not look like Christ. We're here today because we want to look like Christ. And we want, we want the blessings of being in a right standing with God. Here's four things that I learned from, from this passage that I think would help me in my daily life. And I pray and hope that it will help you in your daily life as well. Number one, if I want to, if I want to sin less, if I want to, if I want to, to stay away from failure before it happens. Number one, I've got to recognize and run from my weaknesses. Recognize and run from my weaknesses. Jesus had told Peter ahead of time that he was going to deny him three times, and Peter. Peter said, there's no way, God. Jesus, I'm telling you, everybody else in this circle will do that before I will. Peter, Peter left, let his confidence in himself, which, by the way, turned out to be one of his weaknesses. He let it, he let it lead him to this failure. Jesus, Jesus had told him that, man, the flesh is weak. Pray, pray that you don't fall into temptation, and, and he did. Every one of us has some area of vulnerability. I'm weak in some areas, you're weak in some areas. I'm strong in some areas, you're strong in some areas. The secret to staying away from failure is to recognize and run from our weaknesses. Stay away from the things that, that, that you are more vulnerable in. We all face different temptations with varying intensities, but we all face them. Peter, if he had run from that place, he wouldn't have had the opportunity to do it. Stay clear of the places where you fall into temptation. Stay clear of the things that, that make your mind do something that you don't want it to do. Recognize and run. We're told in Scripture many times to flee from things to flee let me list some for you they're going to be on the board for you here's just a just a a snapshot of some some of the things that we're told to run away from to flee 
1 Corinthians 6.18, flee from sexual immorality. 1 Corinthians 10.14, flee from idolatry. 2 Timothy 2 and 22, flee from the desires of your youth. Speaking about materialism, 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy 6, 1, but you, O man of God, flee from all of this. We're told to run away from sin, to recognize it and to run away. I, I just, as I look at this, this story, I, I'm thinking, you know, Peter, Peter had an opportunity to run away from that, but he didn't. And he denied him not once, not twice, but three times. Oh, if he'd have just fleed. And if in my own life, oh, I need to run away from the things that tempt me. If I'm weak in an area, I need to flee from it. I ought to stay away from it. Some sins are so strong and so dangerous that that I ought not mess with. Just like I couldn't fight a bear and expect to win, I ought not think I can fight sin and expect to win. We have to respect the power of temptation on our life and flee. One of my study Bibles in my office right now is from 1980. I had it when I was living in Tyler, Texas, Paul Powell was my high school pastor. And I looked back over this text, the one that we're studying today, and going down the side of the margin in my Bible, I wrote this, and it's a quote from Paul Powell. And I'm going to be honest with you. In 1980, I'm not even sure I understood it, but I wrote it down, and I think I wrote it down in 1980 for this day. Paul Powell, written in the margin of my Bible, said, when you flee from temptation, don't leave your forwarding address. Now listen, I don't, as, a, as a, 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 a junior in high school, I don't know if I even knew what a forwarding address was. But I sure know now. And I think his advice is, is my advice. Flee from temptation. Run from it. Stay as far far away from it. Recognize the weaknesses that I have. On April the 4th, I read Proverbs chapter 4. If you want to read something that I'm reading, if you, if you want to, if, if, if we want to read the same passage of scripture today, whatever day of the month it is, open up the book of Proverbs and read that number proverb. This morning I read Proverbs number 7 because today's the 7th. On the 4th, I read this, and, and it, it's so fitting for today. Proverbs 4, 23 and following, and I think it's on the board for you. Above all, else, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Make level paths for your feet and take only the ways that are firm. Don't swerve to the right or to the left. And look at how Solomon ends it. Keep your foot away from evil. Oh, I would say to you, the very first step of me not failing is to recognize my weaknesses and to run away from them. I wonder what that would be in your life. I don't know. I know what it is in mine. I know my areas of temptation. You know yours. And tr truth is, probably no one else fully knows what yours is. And truth is, probably no one else fully knows what mine is here. So I'm, I'm saying let's run away from our weaknesses. And let's run towards our stronghold, our rock, our risen Savior. Step one recognize and run away from my weaknesses if people would have done that i don't think he would have denied him three times step two in staying away from failure step two would be to choose wow my friends carefully i want you to think about if peter had been with the disciples instead of warning warming himself around a community fire 
would that have happened? I don't think so. Because I don't think if he had been with the other disciples, I don't think the other disciples, for instance, I don't think James would have went, Peter, don't you know Jesus? No, he knew he knew Jesus. But the scripture says he wasn't with the disciples. He, he did not choose his associates very, very good at that moment in time. A servant girl walks up to him. We don't even know who she is. Hey, weren't you with him? Opportunity number one to deny. Oh, if he had been with the people he should have been with that night, that one wouldn't have happened. A little while later, another girl came up. Hey, I think you were with him, right? No. If he would have been with the disciples, that one wouldn't have happened either. The third one, uh, certainly not the one he took the most serious because it says that he actually cursed as he said it. That one would have never happened if, he'd been, if he would have chosen his friends a little more careful. And I would say to you that good associates, good Christian friends can be your strength. Good Christian friends, the great evangelist, the great evangelist Sam Jones says you can't run with the dogs without getting any fleas on you. That's what the Bible says, too. Well, it doesn't use the word fleas. But look at what it says, for instance, in 1 Corinthians 15, 33. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Choose your friends carefully. Look at what the Bible says, Proverbs 13, 20. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise. Well, no, that's what I want. I want to surround myself with Christian men and women. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpeth another. Somebody asked me why I go to breakfast Wednesday morning at Chick-fil-A at 6 a.m. and have breakfast with 15 to, to 20 men. They asked me that this past week, and I said, because those men make me a better Christian. Those men sharpen me. Just as bad character corrupts good character, walking with the wise makes me wise. And if Peter, hear me, if Peter would have been with the disciples that night, we'd have another story in Matthew 26, 69 through 75. And I can look back in my life, and if I would have chosen my friends carefully, I would not have some of my failures. If I wouldn't have been in the wrong place at the wrong time, I wouldn't have some of my failures. If I would have been at the right place at the right time, the sins that I committed, I would not have committed because I would have been at the right place at the right time. I want to head off failure. I'm thankful that failure is not final, but I don't like going through the failure. I do not like having to repent before a holy God. Because you know what happens when you repent before a holy God? It's the one time that you get real and you realize that He is everything and I am nothing. And that it was the blood of Jesus Christ that paid my sin debt. I want to stay away from having to repent, which means I want to run and recognize and run away from my weaknesses. And I want to choose my friends carefully. I want to, I want to choose people that make me a better Christian. I want to hang around people that look like Christ, because I want to look like Christ. Step three, I think Peter would have, could have heeded, would have been to listen to and act on my conscience. You have a conscience, by the way. I have a conscience. Conscience is made up of two words. It's a compound word. The word C-O-N, that prefix means with. S-E-I-E and C-E means science, knowledge. So with knowledge. You have something within you. Sometimes it's a still, small, quiet voice that says, hey, this is not right. And yet, if you're like me, I don't always listen to that voice. Sometimes it screams, hey, you ought not be here. And I, I sometimes don't act on it. I hear it, but I don't act on it. I, I think at some point, Peter's conscience had to speak to him. I don't know if it was after the first time, after the second time, or when that rooster crowed. But at some point, with knowledge, from within, something screamed in Peter's life that said, man, this is not right. And, and, he, and he went outside and he wept bitterly. I would say to you that I want to stay away from having to weep bitterly because I know what that looks like when I don't listen 
to that voice inside of me that says, stay away from there. Paul says you have a conscience. And, and Paul says we're going to be judged on our conscience. Look at what the Bible says in Romans 2. Romans 2, beginning with verse 15, it says these words. They show that the requirements of the law are written on our hearts. In other words, we know it here. But that our consciences also bear witness. And our thoughts, our thoughts sometimes accuse us. And, and at other times, our thoughts even defend us. But this will take place on the day when God judges people's secrets through Jesus Christ, just as the gospel proclaims. I'm going to be judged on those times that I knew. I knew this wasn't right, and I didn't run away from it. I stayed there like Peter and just kept denying Jesus, kept sinning, whatever that was. I knew it was in my life. I knew I was weak at it, and I stayed right there. Listen to and act on our conscience. When God says something inside of you and God speaks and says, you know this is not right, run away from it. Don't, don't, don't stay there. Give heed to your conscience. <laughs> when I was typing my outline, I'm a terrible uh, uh, user of a keyboard, keyboard I am, and I, my handwriting's worse. Sometimes I'll leave a note at the office and Stephanie or Brandy, one of them will go, what, what does this say? But when I was typing my outline, and I, I use a, 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 an outline for, for my study, I, I was typing the word run, are you in? That's pretty easy, right? Are you in? It's just got three letters. As I'm typing it, hey, just a little bit below the R and just a little bit to the right, if you're familiar with a keyboard, is the letter F. And without knowing it, I had planned on writing run several times. Are you in? Are you in? Are you in? But I had been typing the letter just a little bit below it, just a little bit to the right. Fine. And, and I, I, I was looking back over my notes, and I was like, fun away from it? And then I thought, you know, that's the lie that the devil sometimes gives me. He'll say, that's just a little fun. It's just one letter away from run. But if it's not right, if it's wrong, if it's sin, it doesn't matter if it's fun or not. Hey, don't, don't make the mistake of sticking on the fun part. Run. Run away from it. And I, I underlined it in my notes. I said, it's okay to have fun, but have good fun. Run from the stuff that's not good I think there's one one more one more and this is one Peter didn't do in the garden of Gethsemane step four would be to pray daily for God's help pray daily just a few minutes before this is when Jesus said Peter stay awake and pray and you you know the story he slept they all three slept. They didn't pray. I, I would say to you, choose to pray. Choose to pray. And, 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 and prayer can be the most powerful force that you and I have. Prayer can be what, prayer can be what gets us through. Prayer ahead of time can can give me the courage to run instead of stay. Prayer ahead of time, prayer ahead of time can be the difference in my failure and my spiritual success. Johnny, what are you, what are you talking about? How can you pray? Well, let me, I, I think if we, if we just take this story, and if Peter would have done this and this and this, this story would have been different. And for me in my life, if I would pray this and this and this, this would be different. Pray this and this and this. Let me give us three prayer requests. Three things to pray. Try praying this. I'm going to pray it. I've been praying it all week. I don't ever encourage you to do something that I'm not doing. I'm doing it with you. And so this week, if, if before you start your day, your day, if you'll pray this prayer, I'll be praying this prayer. We'll all be praying this prayer. And I'll be praying it together with you because I don't want to fail. 
I, I don't, I don't want to deny Christ. I want to I want to be what God wants me to be. And I know that's what you want to. So pray, number one. Pray something like this. God, help me to, number one, look like Jesus. Donnie, you don't even know what Jesus looked like. I got a good idea, friends. I don't know maybe the physical characteristics. I think Jesus was a, I think Jesus was a good-looking guy. I do. I think Jesus was strong. I don't, think, I don't think Jesus was, was weak. I, 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 find, I find the story when Jesus went into the temple that was filled with money changers, and Jesus grabbed a rope, and he cleaned house. That's a strong man. I think Jesus had a friendly face. Children ran up to him. They climbed all over him. People talked to him. They went out of their way to talk to him. I think Jesus had a smile on his face. I think Jesus was strong. I think Jesus was, was friendly looking. That's not what I'm talking about when I say pray to help me look like Jesus. I'm, I'm saying help my actions look like what Jesus would be doing. I, I, I think, I think that, that from this story we can learn that I want to look like Jesus. I think, I think the greatest I think the greatest spiritual success that you and I can have here on earth is to go around doing what Jesus did. I mean, the Bible states it pretty clear. Verse John 2, 6. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. That's looking like Jesus. If you claim to be in Jesus this morning, would you raise your hand? Yeah, the Bible says we ought to look like him. So let's pray a prayer. This is how we stay away from failure. Let's pray a prayer. Lord, help me to look like Jesus. Pray secondly this prayer. Lord, help me to sound like Jesus. Well, Donnie, you don't know what Jesus' voice was. No, but I got a pretty good idea because, look, Jesus could sit. Jesus could sit in one place. And at one point, there were 5,000 men plus women and children. There was probably well over 10 thousand people sitting listening to Jesus teach so Jesus had a uh, he had to have a, a good speaking voice he had to be able to articulate his words he had to he had his voice had to carry he had to have a good voice that's not that's not what I'm talking about I think from this story I think I ought to say the things that Jesus said that's what sounding like Jesus is. Say things that, that Jesus said. And I, I, the only way I know to say what Jesus said is to read what Jesus said. And so I read what Jesus said, and then I say what Jesus said. The Bible is pretty, 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 pretty accurate. When, when the last thing, the very last thing that Jesus said before ascending into heaven is Matthew 28. Look at it. It's on the board. And lo, I'm with you always. Matthew 28, 20. And surely I'm with you always, even at the very end of the age. We, we know that he's with us. Let's look like him. Let's sound like him. Let's, number three, pray. Lord, help me to think like Jesus. Think like Jesus. Paul said the Philippian church have the same mindset that Christ Jesus had. Think like Jesus. When I find myself thinking something that I know I'm not supposed to be thinking, change it. You have that ability. God gave you the, the privilege of only being able to think about one thing at one time. If I tell you right now, do not think about pink elephants. You're thinking about pink elephants because you can only think about one thing at a time. If I find myself thinking about something, and can we be honest enough to say that sometimes this does not work the way I want it to? Am I the only one? Y'all don't ever think anything you shouldn't think? Look at your neighbor and say, yeah, I do that too. Tell your neighbor that real quick. Tell them. When I find myself thinking something I shouldn't think, change it. Think about something you should think about. Am, am I the only one that this doesn't work right all the time? Look at your neighbor and say, yeah, yours doesn't work either. Hey, do that real quick. Tell your neighbor. When I find myself saying something 
that I shouldn't say? Change it. And when this isn't looking like Jesus, and yeah, we all struggle, this doesn't always look like Jesus, change it. Run from it. I read an interesting story this past week, made me laugh. Brooklyn Police Department nabbed uh, a perpetrator that had an ongoing string of vandalization. Uh, he was an artist, he thought. And as they were building one of the new city buildings in Brooklyn, every night the, a, a young man would come along with a can of spray paint and he would, he would vandalize it. He would paint graffiti on it. They set up cameras and couldn't catch him. He, he found ways around it. It just seemed like it just recurred over and over and over again. They would put a new wall up. At some point, it would get tagged. The chief transit officer there, a man by the name of Edward Delatore, came up with a plan. He said, let's, let's build a wall that has a one-way glass on it. And let's just stick it out in the wide opening. We can see out, but whoever's doing the vandalizing can't see in. And let's make it plain so that he can see it and have his way. And if you hadn't seen the video, it's hilarious. Because the young man having no idea that behind that glass, members of the Brooklyn Police Department are videoing with their phones, with, with camera, him tagging this. And then they just walked right out and had him red-handed. And what made me laugh the most was the look on his face. Like, is this wrong? That was the look. It's like, is this wrong? And then honestly, if you want to know the truth, I thought about me. Now, I don't think any of us are going to go tag anything. I don't think any of y'all are going to vandalize anything tonight. That's probably not who we are. No. But you know what? I'm going to do something. And sometimes my defense is, is that wrong? And God says, yeah, you know it's wrong. When if I would have, would I have run from it in the first place? When I would have hung around people that didn't do it? When I would have listened to the small voice inside of me that says, don't do it? And I would have prayed ahead of time, specifically, and said, God, don't let me not look like Jesus, sound like Jesus, and think like Jesus. Hey, my challenge to all of us is to recognize failure is not good. But it's not final. There is forgiveness. There is a blood. Sarah, thank you for singing. There is a blood. I just want to stay away from it. Would you stand, please?